So if you've reached that stage where you kind of know your three notes per string scale shapes, but when you improvise it feels like you're just kind of running up and down the scales rather than really implying the chords. Or if you want to start your solo on something different than the root note all the time. Or even if you're at that stage where you're starting to work with modes and it doesn't feel like you're really implying the sound of the mode, then this lesson may be useful for you. So the approach we're going to use is that we're going to play through each of the three uh, notes per string positions going up the neck. But in, in your mind, I want you to maintain a visualization of the bar chord nearest that position that you're playing as well. So for example, if you're playing in G major, I want you to be able to visualize the G major bar chord that sits right on top of the position that you're playing in. And the reason why we use chords uh, is, is really quite straightforward. They're probably something you've already memorized. They're probably something that you can just drop onto the neck. So if I asked you to play the, the, the G bar chord on the third fret, you'd play this E major bar chord just there, yeah? And you probably already have that image in your head and if I asked you to recall it, you recall it straight away. And that's the advantage of using chords. But we're not actually going to be playing the chords, you're just going to be visualizing them. And the, the value of that is twofold. One is every chord contains strong notes that implies the key that you're playing in. So that's a really powerful thing. And the second thing is by, by maintaining this in your head, you tend to get more of the thing that you focus on. So if you're focusing on the chord that implies the key that you're playing in, you tend to dwell more on those notes because that's how humans work. So that's the approach that we're gonna make. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by introducing each of the major and the minor chords, just play through them so, so you can recognize them. Uh, if you've ever used the cage position before, you should, you'll know, you certainly know the major chords. And then for each of the scale positions, I thought I'd show you the associated major chord and minor chord that sits on top of that position. And those are the chords that you'd visualize if you're playing in a main major key or a minor key. And then finally, I thought I'd quickly show you how you can use this exact same technique to play over modes, so you imply a mode rather than the major key and the minor key. So let's run through the chords to start with. Now it's not important necessarily that you can play each of these chords, that you can actually finger them. And that's especially true for some of the minor chords they're really hard to play as chords themselves, but we're not using them. We're not using them to play rhythm guitar. We're using them as guides to improvise over the top of. And so it's fine that you can't necessarily play them. They're just gonna steer your thought processes. So let's go through them. So the chords that I'm gonna to refer to throughout this video are the same bar chords that you refer to in the cage system. So, so they're sort of a C bar chord, an A bar chord. G bar chord, an E bar chord, and a D bar chord. And then I also use the minor equivalent, so C minor. Now this is a horrible chord to play, I never play this when I'm playing chords, but like I say, all, all we're going to do is refer to where the individual notes are. So it's C minor, A minor, E minor. G minor again, another horrible chord, and then D minor. Okay, now let's work our way up the G major scale. I'll go through every position of the G major, working my way up the neck, and I'll show you where the nearest major chord is, so to imply a G major um, tonality, and then where the nearest natural minor is, so in each position that would be E minor. So, so let's do that. Starting in the first position then. So I'm going to work my way up the G major scale. So there's my first scale position. And the root chord is just there. So that's the major chord. The minor chord is that C minor shape just there. So next position looks like this. 
And the major chord is, is the D bar chord, so it's just there. And the minor chord is the A minor bar chord that sits there. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so the third position is just here. is just here. Yeah. And the major chord is based on the A minor, A major chord, just there, A major bar chord. And the minor is that that horrible G minor chord. Next position. And again we're using that same A bar chord for the for the major chord. And then the minor chord. Use a bar E minor. position there. And the major chord is the bar G chord on the 12th fret. And the minor chord is that bar E minor chord just there. So final position then. It's just there, the bar chord is the bar E chord up on the 15th fret for the major key. And the minor key is the bar D minor chord up on the 14th fret. Both a bit of a squeeze for my big fingers. So there you have it. Okay. So we've just been focusing on the major and the minor chord associated with each of the positions going up the neck. But there are actually five more chords that you can find in each of these positions. And these five chords relate to the other modes of the major scale as well. So let me see if I can demonstrate how you'd use those. Okay, so let's see if I can demonstrate how emphasizing the chord changes the modal sound of the scale that I'm playing. So the scale that I'm going to play is this one. So it's a D major scale up on the 10th fret. And there's my chord. And when I start to just play around with this, because I'm, I'm thinking about those D major chord tones, I'm getting a kind of a D major kind of a sound coming out, hopefully you can hear that. But if we move to the next chord up, which is E minor, but I'm still going to play that same scale position, but the chord I'm thinking about now is this E minor chord. is changing what I'm thinking about and naturally starting to emphasize these E minor chords. And that brings out the kind of the Dorian sound. Hopefully you can hear that. So 
so this is a really powerful technique if you can work on it. And like I say, I would start with the major key and the minor key to, firstly, so understand how the scale fits against the major chord, how the scale fits against the minor chords, so you can imply one or the other. And then you can start to introduce the modes as well. Understand, so you could play, say, uh, I don't know, an E minor chord and imply an E Dorian or an E Phrygian sound just by understanding how the chord fits against the scales for each of those modes as well. So explore it, have fun with it, and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.